Keeping control over your cash flow is a very difficult thing for a lot of small business owners. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you the exact steps that I've used to build a system in Airtable that runs Gap Consulting's finances so that you can do the same for you. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner here at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate using no-code tools. So if that's of interest and you wanna learn more, do check out the links below. And before we get going into the actual video itself, where again, we're gonna be talking about managing cash flow using a no-code tool, specifically Airtable. But before we get into that, I do want to invite you to join me for my next free training. Once a week, I hop on a live webinar and showcase the fundamental building blocks of how you can build and leverage automation so that it runs your business on autopilot and helps you reclaim your time. So if you find that you're constantly stressed and never seem to have enough time in the day, you could probably benefit from a lot of automation. Check out the link below or visit me at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration and sign up and join us for the next training. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. And I'm gonna go right into my screen here. You can see I am starting with a brand new database, starting from scratch, nothing in here yet. And there are two different ways that you can kinda of look at this. But before I go any further, I do wanna be fully transparent and say that a lot of the ideas that I'm talking about here came from a book that I read called Profit First. It was recommended to me by an amazing client of ours and it's written by Mike Michalowicz. If you're at all interested in you know, learning a little bit more about managing your cash flow as a business owner, I highly recommend this book. And everyone that I've ever told about it thinks it's just an incredible, uh, an incredible work. Really at the core of what it talks about in this philosophy, it's that as a business, when we collect money, when we earn our revenue, we need to be thoughtful about where that money is going. Essentially, we can use this idea that we are taking from every hundred dollars that we earn, a certain percent goes into profit bucket and a certain percent goes into the operating costs bucket and a certain percent goes into the tax liability bucket. And this way we're always able to stay ahead of our taxes, of our, uh, our payroll, all the different costs that we incur as a business because every time we earn a dollar, we know what percentage of that dollar is getting put aside for these different costs. And so, you can do this in two ways. You could build everything in one table, all of your transactions, both inflow and outflow. There's nothing wrong with that approach. And in fact, at Gap, we have this internal debate between the director of our project team and myself. We're always kind of butting heads on this. He prefers to put it all in one table. And frankly, I prefer to break it out and have income in one table. So all of the inflow of cash and then all of the outflow of cash in another table. There's not a right or wrong way to do this. And technically, if I had to really be precise, I would probably have to say that putting it all in one table is the right way to go because we're talking about financial transactional data. And so it should kind of belong in one place, but it's easier for my brain to think about it in two separate tables. And so that's what I'm going to demonstrate here today. Just know before we get going that you could absolutely take these concepts and use them all in one table. So for me, I'm going to make this income. So all of the revenue that we earn is going to be right here. And then the next table is going to be our outcome or expenses. And I'm going to ditch all of the extra fields that always are created when you first start a new table. This is not necessary in our case. So I'm gonna get rid of these and we're just gonna build from scratch. Now, as I generally do when I'm building a database from scratch, I'm not gonna worry about the primary field until I've come back around and put in the rest of the data that I need. So every piece of income that we earn has a date that it was uh, created or paid. So these can be two different things. If you're using an invoicing software, there's gonna be a date that you create your invoice. So that could here use the created date, right? So if you wanna bring in the created date, as soon as you create a new record, then you are also stamping it with the date and timestamp that it was created. But the other side of that, the other part of the date formula here is the date that the thing is paid. 
And so we're gonna also track that. So this could be renamed as the date paid or paid date as well. Now, of course, every financial transaction also includes an amount. So we can bring in a currency field type here, change the currency symbol to match whatever you use. Uh, for me, it'll be US dollars. And you can just type in whatever amount this needs to be. $1,500, $750, or $150, you know, whatever the case may be, it will take any numeric data there. And then the other thing that you'll likely want to track is the option or type of sale. And so for this, you'll use a single select field and you can bring in the different types of things that you might sell. Maybe you have courses, maybe you have uh, development, maybe you have you know, freelance work. However you identify the different types of things that you sell as a business, you can do here. And if you need additional granularity, you can build that in a second field. So I'll just copy this one and I'll say option detail. So for example, if you build, if you have many different courses, maybe you wanna track all of your course data at one level so that you can see what percentage of your total revenue is course data, but you also wanna drill in and see how much of each course you're selling. So you could say course one, course two, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. You can make this as you know, granular as you'd like. So it's quite easy now to come in and say, look, that was a development project. And in this case, I don't have an option detail, but in this case, you know, for this second record, maybe I sold a course and it was course two, right? You get the idea. So lots of different ways that you can break this down and slice up the way you receive that income. Now we're of course gonna track that paid date. And so we would say, okay, well the day this was created was this day, but you know, it got paid, you know, in this case in the future, right? Or whatever the case may be. Of course, this is also going to tie to a few other things. So you'll probably have a database of contacts as well and you're gonna tie into that table. So you'll bring in the contact that the person that bought from you or the organization that bought from you and other things as well. Now let's get into the name here. I'm going to bring in a, a concatenation formula. So I'll just write a little uh, concatenate, which is a fancy way of saying and stringing a bunch of things together. And I can just take, for example, the paid date, wrap it with a date time format here and uh, include that in lowercase l format, which is month slash day slash year. And then I can also include a dash and perhaps the, uh, uh, the option. So I can track to see what, what did we sell on what day. Now, again, if you're tying in your contacts, the person who actually bought from you, you could bring that into here as well so that it helps you really identify what that piece of income is. Okay. Now, this is all fine and good, but the fun part about this is where we actually allocate the dollars that we made and we bring them into our expenses so that we know exactly what's happening with our cash flow. So we're going to tie our expenses to our income now. I'm going to build a linked relationship and every expense is going to relate to one income item but every income item will link to multiple expenses because when we sell one thing, it has to feed a lot of mouths. So we might have a payroll cost, we might have tax liability, we might have our profit, whatever the different buckets for each piece of income are, build that here. So I'm gonna set up that and I'll link to our first one here. And in this example, let's suppose I only have three different types of expenses. So I'll create an expense type field. Again, I'll use a single select here and I can name the different types of these expenses as follows. So in our case, maybe we have a payroll expense, a tax liability, and a profit expense. Of course, customize this in a way that makes sense for you and your business. Now, I want an amount for each expense, and so again, I'll use a currency here, and if I were to just look over at this development record, we know that that particular line item, that income amount was $1,500. So we probably would have some sort of percentage allocation that we want to divvy into these different buckets. For example, maybe our payroll is always 50% of the cost of revenue. So in this case, our payroll cost would be $750. Beyond that, we know we still have 750 left or the other 50%. Maybe of that remaining 50%, uh, you know, 400 of it is tax liability and 350 is profit. So I could do something like this. 
Now we've fully allocated the $1,500 that we earned and we put it into these three buckets. And then I can come into my expense name and bring in a formula. And in most cases, you'll probably want to again use concatenate, combine your income with the expense type. So now I get a nice little output here that's showing me the income and specifically what this piece of the expense is contributing to payroll, tax or profit. Now the last missing piece here is building automation to support your new structure. And it's quite easy to do. The first thing we'll do is go into our income and build some formulas that will outline the rules of our expenses. So for example, I might have my payroll calculation. And inside of this formula, I'm just looking at the total amount that is uh, received here on this income record. And I'm multiplying it by, in our case, 50%. And I'll format that to output as currency. And that will get me my payroll. Similarly, I can create uh, the same types of calculations for the other parts of my business. In our example, it was roughly 26.7%. So if I wanted to use that, I could make it 26 0.7 and that will get me close to that $400 amount for that tax. And then similarly, I can do a calculation for my profitability as well. And I can just take the remainder. So whatever my amount is on the transaction, subtracting out my payroll and then also subtracting out my tax so that I know what's left over at the end of the day. Now, to be more precise, you'll probably want to use a rounding formula here as well so that you don't get a repeating decimal. In order to do that, just take your calculation, wrap it with round and tell it how much you want to round, in my case, to the second decimal. And so this will ensure that you don't get a repeating decimal that goes out into perpetuity, which could mess up your calculations. So go ahead and apply that similar thing to all of your different calculations so that you don't have any issues with that. Now, in terms of building your automation, you can build a custom automation when a record in your income table matches specific conditions. In this case, I'll say that there must be an amount that is greater than zero. Uh, and you can get as granular here as you'd like. You could, for example, ensure that it has been paid. So if paid is not empty, this will trigger. If it is empty, it won't trigger, meaning you haven't incurred the expense if you haven't received the money. Uh, we can go into you know all the detail here as much as you want in order to set all these things up. But I would recommend that you include something that says expenses is empty, right? If you already have expenses, why would you want the automation to create new ones? So let's go ahead and run a test here and we'll bring in some sample data. And you can see here that we're going to find a record that matches those conditions. In this case, we're looking at our course sale, which is the $750 one right here. And so with this, we can then build some actions so we can create three records in our expense table. And let's first group by our income record here. So in our expense table, I will say, look, I want to create a record here with what income? Well, that's the project that triggered this automation. Use the record ID of the project in step one. I will say, what's the expense type? Well, I need to create my payroll expense type. And what's the amount? Well, the amount is the calculated amount that we know back from our record. So we can drill in and find the payroll calculation and insert it here. And when we run this test, what this will do is create a new record here eventually that connects to our course sale and includes the payroll amount of that course sale in the amount of $375. Now, in this example, I've used calculations that are blanket and blanket percentages, but it's very likely that when you sell different things in your business, you're going to have different rules. So of course, if you have a course sale, you probably don't have a big payroll calculation. It's probably a larger profit item, although you probably incur some software costs and things like that. So just be aware of that and you can get as granular as you want in your setup. Now, the last thing I would add is that you will probably want to run a weekly report. And so there is a capability here for you to do that. You can check out this new weekly digest. It's in beta and it will send you an email uh, with the expense type of profit. So in this example, it says, you know, you can set up so that at 2 p.m. every Monday, email records where the expense type is profit or whatever the case may be. So this is a great way for you to kind of get a weekly check in on your financial health of your business at the various levels of it and the different costs that you've incurred 
based on the revenue that you brought in over the last span of time. Now I realize I went a little quickly in this video and we covered a lot of ground. So please do leave any questions you have below and I'll try to answer those as quickly as I can. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.